years ago, we, we had a PhD student from Stanford we sent over to, to Sweden to interview 20 editors of the lead, leading publications in Sweden, including business and tech publications. And it turned out that most of them sort of thought that innovation and invention was the same thing. So even though they were covering it, they couldn't tell the difference between innovation and invention. And some of them felt that, wow, you know, innovation, it's such a fuzzy concept. We, it's such a buzzword. We can't write about it. Um, they, uh, some of them said, well, you know, of course, we already cover, we already cover innovation. We call it tech journalism. Or it's nothing else than business journalism. And then they're thinking of these small purple squares in the last picture. So I think it's pretty much that, that, that an understanding of the concept of innovation and that actually is very much serious research and work done on it, that, that's lacking uh, in the traditional media. Mm. Oh. Am I going backwards? Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Suddenly it decided to go backwards. <laughs> How did it do that? Mm. Let's switch. All right. Another challenge also is that the innovation economy is global. You know, the, if you have a good innovation company, they don't do everything in Maastricht. They will be uh, doing things over in Silicon Valley. They will be doing things in, in, in India, in China, wherever. And, uh, uh, but, but, you know, the, the business and technology journalism that, that should cover this, that's often more, more local. The journalists are here, and maybe sometimes they travel around the world. But there's no, there's no international network. Like there is, for example, usually the international networks that cover things globally around the world and that interact, they cover more stuff like wars and uh, catastrophes and stuff. It's, it's sort of the front page stuff on CNN. Um, so um, in order to, to cover, really, if you want to report on an innovation process, what's happening in the, with, you know, how will I be communicating in the, in the future with my cell phone and how will we be, uh, you know, how will society be benefiting from it and earning money on it and so on. One really has to combine knowledge from the Silicon Valley and here and other places and put that together in the story. So we need to also create some kind of network for, for journalists internationally. Another problem is also the business model that uh, the basic uh, business model for journalism is write new stories, collect readership attention, and then sell part of that readership attention to advertisers. So then, of course, if you come and say, I've got a great idea. We're going to start a, a, an innovation beat. Then the first question from, uh, from the publisher is going to be, great, who's the reader and who's the advertiser? And uh, that, that's... Uh, that's an interesting question, since I mean the innovation ecosystem is still rather diverse. So it's not like uh, as easy as when you start a, a, a magazine like IDG as something called CIO, which basically basically is a is is a magazine about computers for people who buy computers, and then you can take in ads from people who sell computers. You know, very simple. But here you have to understand what the innovation ecosystem looks like and who buys and sells from who. And that is, that is something that usually the, 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 the sort of marketing departments uh, of uh, publishing houses, they don't have the skill set to, to, to analyze that, to find out who's an advertiser and who's a reader. This guy who started Biotech Sweden, he, he actually spent half of his uh, startup money on just trying to identify 
who did what in the biotech sector in Sweden, uh, including identifying you know, who were the politicians who made decisions about these things, who were the patent attorneys and stuff like that. And I mean, I, I don't think anybody has, has uh, I mean, he, he was pretty unique in doing something like this. Uh, another thing, lack of innovation traditions. If you go back and think of this uh, picture I had about the newsroom covering computers where everybody uses typewriters. Uh, the in, if we're talking about introducing a new field of, of uh, reporting and so on, and or maybe changing our methods, well, one, one needs to have the ability to change, to create that, to do research and to implement the research. And most news organizations don't have innovation departments. They don't have the tradition of it. Um, the, it's been very hands-on. You know, the news industry has had uh, the same business model for over 100 years. And they've had uh, uh, the, the same way of organizing how to make the news also for a very long time. It's actually since the end of the 80s that things have begun to change. And it's, it's under great pains that that uh, the big news companies are trying to implement this. So, so I think this is also um, another challenge that hasn't made innovation journalism happen earlier. OK, let's come on here. So what I have then uh, at Stanford is a, um, um, is, is a fellowship program that tries to address these issues a bit. We, we get in journalists from. Uh, Sweden, Finland, uh, from, uh, we got a few from Pakistan this year. Uh, we're going to get from uh, Slovenia next year. And uh, we see more countries coming in. And then we have them working with, you, with top newsrooms that host them and let them write stories about uh, innovation. And then we have a uh, conference and workshops at Stanford every year. Oh, okay. And this is how we had it this year. We started by having a kickoff workshop at Stanford. And uh, then they went out and worked in the hosting newsrooms and wrote stories about innovation. And then we had a follow-up workshop. And then we had a, a big conference uh, at Stanford where we then uh, sort of brought together people and, and discussed innovation journalism. Um, all the time we keep together through a, a sort of virtual community where we can discuss things along the way, even though we sit spread out. Um, and here you can see these were, these were publications where the journalists came from, and these were the ones that they were working with as a part of the program. And I think you can recognize a number of them. Oh, OK. Here, here's a collection of, of uh, all the publications that have been involved with my program so far. Some examples of stories that have been produced within, the, within this program. So Marcus Lilkist was one of the fellows the first year. Uh, and he was hosted by the Wall Street Journal. So he wrote the story about that blogs were getting ads. And this was actually the, the first story in Wall Street Journal about that blogs were getting ads. And today, you know, we can realize that this was actually a rather important story. At that